Hey everyone, I'm Guillermo Estada with North Carolina 4-H Program. I'm really excited to introduce to you today professional chef Alon Sanchez. You may recognize him from his roles on Food Network's Chop, Chop Junior and Fox's MasterChef Junior. Now, thank you so much for taking the time to cook with us today. Alon, what are we going to be making today? Thank you so much for all of your attention and your excitement and enthusiasm with food. So lots of love to 4-H. Here's what we're doing is basically some roasted chicken thighs with chipotle love and a sauteed pozole or hominy. Awesome. That sounds amazing. And I think we are ready to start cooking. Let's do it up, baby. Come on. Let's do it. Okay. So right here, we're going to use some chicken thighs, which are beautiful and readily available. And a lot of times they have a little bit of that excess skin. Okay, Guillermo? Yes. So you want to kind of maybe get rid of some of that. If it has too much of that, that fat or that skin, just kind of maybe just trim it up and make it look a little bit beautiful, okay? So now that we have that, let's go ahead and turn on our pan, right? Let's make sure we're getting that hot, okay? So I'm gonna use sort of a cast iron skillet, something that is sort of wide in circumference and surface area. And then you wanna start with like a medium high heat, okay? So now that we have that, let's go ahead and season our, our chicken thighs, yes. okay? So let's go with some nice salt, right? So let's do a nice generous amount of salt on the outside skin, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the same with black pepper. So if you have pepper, you just kind of want to have a nice little even coat on the outside. Orale. Okay. And I like to just kind of press it in there, Guillermo. Okay. Perfect. And then we'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side, right? Because both sides need to taste delicious. Okay. Yes. All righty. So now that we have our pan nice and hot, let's go ahead with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And let's just coat the bottom part of our pan. Okay. All right. And the idea here is we want to just get a nice little sear. And once we add our, our chicken, okay, mm -hmm. and we get a nice sear, and we hear that beautiful sound of sizzling, the idea here is that we're going to turn it down to like almost a medium heat, okay? And the idea All is right. why is that important, Guillermo? Because we don't want to scorch the skin. We want to mm -hmm. render it, let all that fat of the chicken come out without yes. uh, without scorching the actual meat, okay? So let's go down to a medium heat and let it just do its thing, okay? What we're going to go ahead and do is start to make our chipotle love, okay? Chipotle love, okay? We're going to put our garlic into a blender, okay? I have some of the reserved garlic oil, right, that it's been cooked in, okay? You don't have to use all of it. All right. You use uh, about a quarter cup is fine. Now to that, we're going to add our chipotle and adobo, okay? Which is basically a, a dry smoked jalapeno. All right. We're going to add that to our blender as well, okay? Yes, and now sir. we're going to add a little bit of lime zest, okay? Yes. So let's put some lime zest. To this, we're going to add some juice of the lime, okay? And then take some cilantro with the stems and all. If you chop it, it's all good. We're going to add that in there as well. And then all we're going to simply do is puree this, right? Salt. I've already browned my chicken. I'm going to take sure. some of that chipotle love, and I'm just going to paint the outside of it. Okay. All right. And Chef, I heard that you're the author of many cookbooks and then you also have a memoir out. Now, can you tell us a little bit about um, why you started writing cookbooks? And I know you're definitely not the first in your family to start writing cookbooks either. Once you paint it on the outside, take it out of your pan. Okay. Okay. Let that sit. And then I'm going to answer your Question All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and start chopping some of our vegetables. 
Yeah, and then what we'll do is while that's sauteing, I can I can get into your, all your beautiful questions. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take some carrots. We'll take some onion and celery as well, and cut it, right. cut it into some nice little dices. And have fun with it, Papa. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't have to stress that at all. So yes. keep your pan hot and add everything to your to your pan. Okay. All right. Perfect. The idea here is that you want to let this kind of cook down and pick up all that wonderful chicken flavor. That's what it's all about. You asked me a beautiful question about my memoir and why it was it important for me to do it, right? Yes, sir. Well, the idea is that it's an inspirational tale, but it's also a cautionary tale. Because you think about your life, right, especially where you are right now. This is when you can make really awesome decisions, right? If you're going to dedicate yourself to the cooking world, this is usually when young chefs start, okay? I know at your age, I was definitely already working in kitchens and starting to cultivate my love for food, right? Yes. And that's really a, a really awesome time. So my, my memoir really uh, encapsulates a lot of my stories and a lot of my lessons that I've learned in the kitchen, right? It is so important. Yes, you're going to learn about cooking technique. Yes, you're going to learn about uh, how to develop your palate, but really the life lessons. And, the, and learning how to work in a team, learning how to be accountable for your work, all that happens from a kitchen. So it's beautiful. Absolutely. I know my dad, he makes empanadas de cochinita, and uh, he's from Yucatan. So my dad loves to make food for all his friends. And that's how he kind of brings the whole family and all our friends and our community together. He loves um, handing out food to the neighbors, whether he's making um, the tortas or empanadas, yeah. or whatever he's making that day. Well, I love the, U the Yucatan, Quintana Roo. It's one yes. of the last states to be annexed, uh, to be named a state in Mexico. So it's very still untouched and mm -hmm. has that beautiful Mayan influence. And you're using sour oranges and the cochinita pibil yes. and uh, the, the tacos de guisado. It's a really beautiful culinary desti uh, destination, apart from being so beautiful as well. Oh. All right. So at this point, young man, we have yes, sir. our onions, our aromatic sweating. Okay. Now let's take our herbs. Let's let's take some thyme. All right. Let's take a couple bay leaves and some fresh oregano. And we're gonna throw that into our braids. Okay. Into our uh, uh, our vegetables. All okay. right. Now to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Or you can use stock. Okay. So yes. now we have our wonderful uh, we have our wonderful chicken thighs. Let's reintroduce that to our pan. All right. Okay. Perfect. And then what we're going to simply do, if you have a lid, you can cover this, and we're going to put it in the oven. And that's going to do its thing. If your second pan hot, you have your second cast iron. All right. I'm going to cut some bacon. I know that you have your bacon already cut. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut mine. And I like to use some nice smoky uh, double double bacon, which is really awesome. So we're going to add our bacon and we're going to let that render, right? Rendering. All right. Mean? Basically, what we're allowing to have happen is that let that all that fat come out. Let that kind of do its thing, and then we're going to want these little crispy bits or these little lardons, as they say in France, okay? Yes. All right. So cool. So we're going to use some tomato. All right. Chopped tomato. I'm going to do the same thing with some onion. All right. Chop some onion. And then once that bacon gets crispy, get them. Yes, then we sir. Can start to add all we can start to add our beautiful fresh ingredients like the tomato, the garlic, the onion. Okay. All right, perfect. Cool. Now, Chef, when did you get? When did you first get started in the kitchen? I know you said that you were really young when you first started, but did you start out at a restaurant, or did you just start out helping uh, maybe your mom or your dad? My mom had a restaurant for uh, twenty-seven years in New York City. All right. Oh wow. So, as a young man, a young uh, no, an adolescent, I should say. Uh, seven, eight years old, I remember going to the restaurant and helping out some of the chefs and the cooks and really started getting myself uh, 
sort of immersed in that environment. And I just loved it. Uh, they were these cool men and women that just, you know, were kind of like abrasive and rough and they loved to cook. And I just fell in love with it. And then from there, uh, I told my mom that I was serious about doing it as a career. And then that's when the mentoring, that's when the this, uh, this sort of travel and that finding the mentor started to happen. It doesn't happen that early for a lot of people, but for me, it happened pretty early. Yeah, that's so, great. All right. Yeah, so now we have our beautiful bacon rendering down. Let's add our tomatoes, our right. garlic, and onion. All right, perfect. Now, this is a good time to add a little bit of salt and seasoning, okay? Okay. Get them all. okay. We're going to add some Mexican oregano, which is this wonderful ingredient that I'm just crazy about. It's um, uh, the Mexican oregano is more kind of considered a wild marjoram. So okay. it's a little bit sort of, um, it has a, the leaves are bigger from something like, like an Italian or a Greek oregano, but mm -hmm. it's very floral and it's typically used in Mexico for sopas, right? But we're yeah. going to use that here as a flavor base. Wonderful. So we're going to add that. And then now we have our wonderful hominy, right? Or solids, right? So it's basically this wonderful cured and cooked uh, white starchy corn, yes. right? Let's add it right now. All right. Let's add it right now. Okay. The flavors and the smells are intoxicating. We're going to add. Add some fresh lime juice, okay? All right. All right. Let's go ahead and add right. some chopped cilantro or parsley, whatever you have herbs available to you. Yes, sir. Now, to that, let's add a couple of nice pats of butter, okay? Guillermo. Yes. To our, our pozole or a hominy, okay? All right. Perfect. Now we're gonna let this kind of do its thing. And Guillermo, once that butter melts and it coats all of the wonderful hominy and the tomatoes and the onions, you should turn it off. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Once you see that butter melt, you're in a good place. So I'm going to take some scallion or green onion and we're going to add that right now. And I like to add my jalapeno right at the end for the same. Same reason I add the herbs at the end, so they keep their vibrancy, okay? Yes. And this is an al gusto thing, right? So this is to your liking. If you like it spicy, yes. add more. But do not remove the seeds or the stems. I'm sorry, the seeds or the ribs of the mm -hmm. jalapeno, because that's where all the flavor lies with the capsicum, right? So I like yes. to add my jalapeno right at the end. Let that permeate. So let me give you a nice little look of my hominy so you guys can see what it looks like. So the tomatoes are broken down, looking beautiful. Yours look great. Yours look All great. Right. Perfect. So let's look at our chicken, shall we? Yes, sir. So let's go to the oven. <clears throat> now, what we want to do here, Guillermo, is... Take some of that residual uh, chipotle love, right? So we, okay. had, we had a good amount of it, right? Yes. So let's go ahead and add a little spoonful into the gravy or to the sauce that's on the bottom, okay? All right. So when you come out, when it comes out, okay? turn up the heat so it starts to like boil at a nice rapid pace, okay? All right, perfect. Now to that, we're gonna add a couple pats of butter, okay? Okay. And then what we're gonna simply do is start to plate. So get your plate and let's take our hominy and put it right on the side of your dish. So here we go. Loving that, okay? Have you learned something, Guillermo? Oh, Are you yes. Happy? I'm happy today. <laughs> Food has to be something that triggers emotion, right? Yes, it's the language absolutely. we all speak. Remember that, okay? As you go through life 
and you're meeting new people, you can always share a meal. It's like playing soccer. You can always make a friend if you play soccer in the world, right? Yes. If you know if you know how to cook, you will always make somebody happy. Yeah. Okay. Or, e make or even better yet, cooking for your 4-H agent or your county extension director or your 4-H club even. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. All right. So let's take some of that gravy, young man. Let's All put right. it right on top. The sauce. Right around our chicken. Look how gorgeous that is. All right, so let's take a little bit of that extra parsley or cilantro that you have around. All right. And we're going to garnish our dish with that. Check it out. So a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of parsley. Perfect. Put it right on top of your chicken. And that right there. Oh, hold on. One last thing. Do you have more if I may? Yes. A little squeeze of lime. All right. Perfect. Let's see. I think we, we're out of limes here. here. <laughs> yep. Man, am I proud of you, young man. <laughs> look at that. Our dishes look very similar. I love it. Perfect. Man. So, Guillermo, this is a very special time of the year because um, it's Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, for me personally, I think it's an opportunity to reflect, uh, to give homage to all the people that in my family that have taught me and given me valuable lessons. I'd be interested to know what some of your experiences and your pride for, for Hispanic Heritage Month. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually part of the De Colores and Folklorico group, which is a 4-H club in my home county of Wayne County. And uh, we've really worked on making sure that we're appreciating our culture, not just during Hispanic Heritage Month, but throughout the entire year, seeing what our culture is truly about, the vibrancy, the, the, the color that's in our culture, and also the dance. A, a lot of us, I personally didn't even know about the incredible dances that Mexico brings and not just Mexico, but other countries as well. I'm actually the first Latino 4-H uh, president in North Carolina. So this is a really big honor for me th this year, and it provides a great way to uh, truly uh, become an example for other Latino youth in, uh, in North Carolina and in the North Carolina 4-H program. So it, it means the world to me. Thank you so much, Aaron. I learned so much today, and I can't wait to share this meal with my friends and family. I know my sister, she's a very picky eater, but she'll absolutely love the dish we made. And thank you everyone for watching. To get this recipe, simply go to 4h.org. And not only will you find this recipe, you'll find an entire 4-H Fresh Chefs cookbook available in both English and Spanish, where you can find lots of great recipes from not just 4-Hers, but other incredible chefs like Aaron. Muchísimas gracias, Guillermo. I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been cooking with you. Your skill and your love for food is super evident. Continue your mission uh, with 4-H to make sure that people have those great 4-H habits. I'm really, really grateful that I met you. Thank you. Thank you.